Whenever you bring up bad games for a console, there are typically a ton of contenders. Let's face it, even the very best systems are loaded with terrible software. When it comes to Sega's 32-bit Saturn, many will point to the ports of multi-platform titles as being subpar. Doom is infamous for its choppy frame rate that makes the game nearly unplayable. The Incredible Hulk plays terribly with visuals to match that pain. Criticom is easily in the running for one of the worst fighting games ever made. And the Crow City of Angels is a nightmarish blend of everything wrong with Acclaim and its quick and easy license deals. No doubt I could go on and on naming many more bad games, but when it comes to the absolute worst of the worst, the bottom of the barrel, the completely irredeemable, it's gotta be Death Crimson. It was originally released in August of 1996 exclusively for the Sega Saturn in Japan. It was developed by a company called Echol and was a light gun shooter similar to Virtua Cop. But the similarities end right there because without question, this is the single worst game I have ever played on the platform. And for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to review it right here in this very episode. No punches held on this one, and there might be a curse word or two bandied about, so you have been warned. Anyway, let's get right to it. Our story here has a trio of soldiers looting an ancient temple. One finds a crimson colored gun, one finds jewels worth a fortune, and the other finds books full of forgotten knowledge that could change the world. Happy with their score, they all go home never to see one another again. Ten years later, a new disease is ravaging the world and it's apparently connected to the temple you and your cronies robbed blind. As people are turning into monsters, you find that the Crimson Gun is the only thing that can stop them. Of course, the game itself expands on none of this outside of the on-screen action. There's no cinematics explaining anything and no interaction in the game between characters, leaving this a very hollow experience from a narrative perspective. But it's a rail shooter, right? And a rail shooter it is. It supports both the gamepad and Virtua Gun, for three stages as you blow monsters of various shapes and sizes out of the sky and off buildings, cliffs, and trees. From this simplified perspective, it really is no different than Virtua Cop, except now you are shooting monsters instead of criminals. There's even a targeting system that surrounds certain enemies when they are at their most dangerous. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice a bar that seems to go up and down. This bar represents the power-up features of your gun. Hit a target and it goes up, miss it and it goes down. Once you obtain a couple of full bars, your weapon's special abilities are activated. If you hold the fire button until the secondary gauge at the top of the screen is full, you get a few new ways to attack. In some stages, it's a rapid fire automatic style burst of bullets. In others, it's a bomb you launch that can then be shot and damages everything on the screen. The third option is more a nuke style missile attack that damages everything on its own. Enjoy it while it lasts because you get all this reset with the start of a new area. As you battle your way through enemies, you are going to want to keep an eye out for things like innocent flying squirrels, non-infected humans, and helpful items like extra continues and life replenishment. Outside of that, everything is fair game. These include camel riding madmen, armor clad knights, demons, scorpions, and floating things that don't really resemble anything threatening at all. There is a continue system in place that starts off at two, and you can earn more, but they are all tied to a single life, making this incredibly difficult to legitimately see the end. Boss encounters end each of the three stages and offer a bit of a change. You'll notice arrows on the side of the screen. Here you can shoot those arrows and actually control the camera as the boss moves all around you. You will need to position the camera in the quadrant that the boss is active, and he'll keep moving as he soaks up your damage. It's a small change that at least showed some variety in an otherwise simple playing experience. Our first criticisms land on the game's visuals. 
This has a mix of two-dimensional sprites, polygons, and an infinite plane that draws much of the ground. And ugly just doesn't do justice to just how bad this game looks. It's a shit show, plain and simple. Nothing has more than a few frames of animation, and the architecture is composed of little more than a few polygons and some very simple texture work. I wouldn't call the frame rate terrible, but the herky-jerky camera swings scene to scene in a fashion that doesn't feel natural or like your own foot or in a vehicle. It's so unnatural, in fact, that sometimes things even spin 360 degrees for what seems like no reason at all. The polygon enemies are so bad you really can't tell what the heck they're supposed to be unless you look in the manual. And then you kind of have to shake your head and laugh because there's absolutely no resemblance to what the developers intended. The sprite-based enemies aren't much better and amount to little more than a pixelated mess, but you can at least tell what some of that stuff is. There really isn't much more to the presentation beyond that. There is some full motion video for the opening and ending, but it's so disjointed and lacking any real narrative that it's little more than images that don't mean a thing. There's also a huge problem with variety. Many areas look similar thanks to the simple designs, and the enemies are repeated to the point where you just get tired of seeing them. This was indeed something many rail shooters suffered from at the time, but when your visuals are this rough, the least you could have done is balance it out with a little bit of variety. Of course in the end it really makes very little difference. Death Crimson is a short, ugly shooter that fails on the most basic level to inspire you to return for multiple play sessions. And as you'll soon see, its graphics are the least of its problems. When it comes to sound, your ears are assaulted with sound effects that are as bad as the visuals. Scratchy, distorted explosions, screams, gunshots, and other audible nightmares blast your speakers. It's the kind of stuff that makes you want to turn the volume down so you can barely hear it. The weird thing is, some of the music here is actually okay. Not great, but nowhere near as horrific as the quality of the sound effects. A few of the tracks have a surreal feel to them, like the kind of stuff you might hear at an end-of-life clinic. I've picked out a few selections so you can see for yourselves. As I captured gameplay for Death Crimson here, there was a sense of dread that accompanied every push of the start button and the beginning of a new game. And I had to do that a lot because unfortunately my capture setup meant I had to play this with a controller for all the footage you see. And it's fundamentally broken with a controller in every conceivable way. The movement acceleration is far too fast and there's no option to slow it down. That means any kind of small adjustments to aim properly goes right out the window. Just trying to defeat a single stage with the gamepad becomes an exercise of pure frustration. In order to actually capture anything in the late game, I had to enable cheats, which is why you see all the random numbers on the screen so often. You will see more success with the Virtua Gun, and I did dig out my retired CRT from the garage to give it a go. I was able to actually beat two stages this way without any of the cheats before succumbing to the third stage as I ran out of continues. But even with the gun I quickly realized that this game has so many problems it's hard to imagine anyone having any fun with this. Enemies have hitboxes that sometimes register and sometimes don't. Either that or they have invincible frames that are entirely inconsistent. You will unload on certain enemies and they will not fall no matter how quick you are. The targeting icon that sometimes surrounds enemies is utterly useless. Half the time, if you see it, it's too late 
because you are already taking damage, and the rest of the time the enemy that had the reticle doesn't fire at you at all. It almost seems at random when it appears and what it means. There's also issues with the power-up system for your gun. Having to hold your attack button while it charges often means wasting a shot and lowering your bonus meter in the process. The auto shot power wreaks further havoc by ringing off shots that will result in countless misses, again lowering your bonus meter. The fact that your bonuses reset with every level is another issue. Instead of making it so you had these powers in stock and could use them at your discretion, they are random and disappear not long after you get them. They are made almost entirely for boss fights it seems. And speaking of boss fights, it's here where playing with a Virtua Gun has a monster disadvantage. Because the arrows that turn the camera are at the sides of the screen, many of your shots will register as reloads as you frantically fight for survival. This results in you bringing your fire inside the screen some to compensate, but this does further harm by just resulting in simple missed shots as enemies surround you and precious life is lost. All that adds up to a game that is just about the worst rail shooter I have ever played on any platform. The gamepad is nigh on unplayable here and the little help that the light gun brings does little for its more serious design issues. Add to that the terrible visuals, the debilitating sound effects, and a challenge that will break even the most dedicated gamer, and you have something that was voted in Japan as the worst Saturn game ever released. And sure enough, the reviews of that era reflect that. The Japanese press, who were usually always respectful in their critiques, made no bones that this was a dumpster fire. And when the British magazines got a hold of it, it scored some of the lowest ratings I have ever seen a game receive. Funny enough, I tracked down a really interesting article that mounted an impressive bit of proof that this was not a simple case of a cash-in looking for a quick buck. Echo was a small, dedicated team that spent time researching their vision here, meaning this was a product of passion. They must have been one hell of an eccentric group though, because if this is meant to be the product of their vision, drugs most certainly had to be involved. No amount of watching someone else play this will ever convey just how bad it is. You simply have to play it for yourselves. Many of you will need to use a controller since you are on a modern display, and if you last more than a few seconds before the game ends, count yourselves lucky. For those with a Virtua Gun and a CRT, you'll live a bit longer, but this will only convince you further of just how broken it is on the most basic level. The Japanese call software like this Kusoge which literally translates into shit game. These games are often played because they are terrible, and the charm often associated with software that is so bad it's good. I reject that idea in its entirety, however. There is nothing charming about this abomination. There is no fun in this in any way, shape, or form. It's the audio-visual equivalent of being smacked in the face repeatedly or banging your head against a wall. The developers absolutely failed in every aspect of game design. Even the gun calibration screen is broken. Shoot it once and back to the title screen you go. What exactly did you calibrate there? The funny thing is they could have added just a few options to make this infinitely more playable than it is here. A speed select for your cursor when using a controller. A difficulty slider for newcomers. Shuttle mouse support. Hell, I bet just adding a working threat indicator would have taken this from unplayable to tolerable. The worst of this game is in the experience of living at that time and paying full retail for it. This wasn't bargain priced, and instead was the same cost as something like Virtua Cop. Interesting enough, the developer Echol would go on to develop both a sequel and remake of this for the Sega Dreamcast, and both those games were quite a bit better. This may have just been a result of the Saturn taxing their ability to make a good game, but no matter the excuse, Death Crimson is quite simply one of the shittiest games I have ever seen. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.